Hello and welcome to an EverQuest guide for a level 115 Necromancer. Uh, we're going to just jump right into this with the spells and then I'll go over my hotbars and uh, we'll talk about gear and AAs later. Alright, first up I have Assert for Blood as my first spell, Oblivion as my second spell, Pyre of Calgrac, third, Boiling Broiling Shadow as the fourth, Pyre of the Wretched as the fifth, Crystal Crawler Venom as the sixth, uh, Dracinia's Pallid Haze as the seventh, Danvid's Grip of Decay as the eighth. And then I have the Composite spell, so this was used to be, uh, I think I, in the last video I had um, Wounds here. Uh, I don't use Wounds as much, just it's the way I play doesn't seem to work very well for me. Uh, with what I'm fighting. Uh, then I have Call of Skeleton Horde, and then Icy Renewal, which is the pet heal Insight Ally, which is another kind of pet heal proc. And then I have uh, Char Bones, uh, slash whatever my flex is. Typically, I go with uh, uh, Frozen Skin, but I was just in Crystal Caverns killing terrors, so I was slowing them, so you have to use Char Bones. To turn them in undead, and then you can slow them with uh, a scent of Thule right here. So, pro tip. All right. So, uh, the the way this works, and I might have said something wrong in the last video, uh, but I kind of want to cover some of this a little bit more in detail, right? So these these two dots right here, Oblivion and Prior. Uh, are probably some of our, our best dots. Uh, Crystal Crawler Venom is another one that's really good. It's 9,000 uh, per tick. But in shorter fights, I only do Oblivion and Pyre. And then when I'm soloing something that's going to take a while, I do all my dots. Right? And then uh, I kind of rotate a cert in between most casts, right? Like, uh, kind of like watch here. Like, right? here's a combat dummy. So, uh, I'll send my pet in, right? Like, first thing I do, send my pet in. He's in. I get the horde out, because that's on the same macro, right? And then I assert, right? If I get lucky, I keep going. But see, we need to file the synergy up every 12, or, well, I think it was longer now, uh, due to uh, the things. But then I start going, and then every time I can recast assert, I cast it, right? Didn't get it. So we got 16 seconds now. I think it was 12 seconds in the last video. But uh, we want to keep the synergy up. We're at 1 because it affects everybody in our group, right? So increases damage dealt by your critical damage uh, and damage over time by 30%. That's a pretty big, pretty big jump for everybody in your group. Slash your pet, slash you. So definitely something you want to do. And I, what I do is I cycle it. So like I, I get, two, I hit 2. I didn't get it. Then I go to six. I think that's where I was. <laughs> My dots, right? But you can see here we need to re redo Oblivion. So we go back to Oblivion. And then I go f straight into an ass another Assert. Uh, didn't get lucky there. We need to redo Prior, but I did Crystal Venom there. There we go. We got it. So now we don't have to redo that as much. Now we just need to make sure we get all our dots on. And sometimes what I'll do is I will just go straight into redoing doing the full set of dots because some of these last a while right i think you get like a minute and 30 on the disease ones right like uh yeah that's a minute so you know i have a minute and i can recast that didn't get it so i have uh 14 you know i need to read get that back up right and the reason why we want to do that let me see if i can get that buff again just so i so i can make sure i explain this well but each tick of a dot any dot we have can be any one of these dots that gets on there that will take a tick from that that uh the proc from uh assert let me see if we can get another one real quick there we go chaotic power now what this does increases the base damage of your damage over time spells with a duration of at least 24 seconds to deal at least 100 damage by 75 to 200 percent for one minute so you have one minute uh you know i think with whatever it extends it to two minutes right but you have two minutes to use the 25 charges in each tick from each dot will take one of those charges right so 
Uh, that's kind of like the synergy we're going for here. Just keeping that on. Everybody in the group gets, uh, you know, 30% extra crit damage. Just for just for taking us along. <laughs> Which is actually pretty nice, right? Uh, but, you know, we just keep, you know, doing our dots. And I always go back to assert. And I have assert on my assist key. So I assist somebody, I assert that mob immediately. I've, I've been playing this character... Either a mix of grouping with people or soloing, so that's uh, kind of like how that goes. But say so we got a gift of mana. I do have Gina trigger triggers uh, that somebody had sent me, but I don't have Gina running at the moment. I don't have EQ log parser running at the moment. So we got chaotic bow again. We can just go into this and just start our buff cycle, our D well, I guess a dot cycle, I guess whatever you want to call it. Just keep it going and. Kind of, that's that's how I play it at the top level, right? And on my hotbar here from uh, 2 all the way to 0, right? These are all the dots, right? So if we'll just go through 3, you know, I got Oblivion because it's a 30 second dot. Uh, I haven't fully optimized what I could do here. I'm out of mana now. Uh, let's go here, Death Bloom. Get a little bit more mana, but uh, just Boiling Shadow. Everything all the way through. And... Typically, I can kill a mob, uh, like a, a, the standard, like I'm killing spiders in crystal caverns right now. So I usually do a full set of dots and then I only refresh Oblivion and uh, Pyre, right? And the mob dies. And, you know, I could probably throw wounds in there, drop composite, but I've I've been having issues with my, my mercenary. Like, she sucks. <laughs> <laughs> it boils down to it. She sucks. And she'll either let the pet die or just let me die. And uh, so I've had to kind of just pop composite on a lot of mobs. So what I like to do is I do blood magic to make it so instead of consuming mana, I consume health, right? So I'm taking a lot of damage. So I want to composite up to kind of pull back that, that health, you know, to life tap it there. Uh, but I, at the same time I do blood magic, I also pop death bloom, uh, which is another, uh, spell for consuming health to give mana back. And I kind of do those at the exact same time. So like, I'll be at like, say 40% mana, I'll pop blood magic and then I'll pop death bloom. So I'll be regenerating mana while taking my health and I'm losing lots of health at the same time. So I, I always composite. I don't even have normal life tap memorized uh when i group with people i do switch out some of these dots for uh mostly life taps <laughs> so i can get the uh essence emeralds uh and stuff like that um let's see here yeah so i can get essence emeralds i think that's really the best thing i'm gonna i'm gonna level up character to sacrifice so i can get some more but uh, the Essence Emeralds actually come in pretty handy when you can res and you don't have a reser in the group, right? So it gives Necro a little bit of advantage in some certain groups at combinations. So there, but my first top bar is pretty much that. So I have a Hide Corpse macro that I use on all my characters. Uh, an Assist, which is just my X target 19. I, I don't have any boxes on the server yet, so I don't have anything there. And then it's just all my dots. Uh, I don't have any macros on these or anything like that. Uh, I like to control them manually. Uh, I am working on timers and stuff to have EQ log parser give me like a little, you know how all my Paladin videos, I have uh, little timers and stuff like that. I'm working the same thing for the Necromancer, but I'm trying to like not invest too much time on it until 125 uh, where I can kind of just not have to do it again for a year <laughs> instead of doing it in five levels. Uh, I don't know if the usefulness of Insight Ally is any good. I actually got an Essence Emerald from this uh, once. So it just gives him a little bit more life tap, which in all honestly, I don't, you know, honesty, I don't think it really does too much. Let's see if we can see any, uh, any damage from that. I don't think we're going to. I think it's gonna be like the spam here, right? Inside it. Oh, here it is. It does six, uh, sixty-two hundred. So he's proccing actually pretty good, right? And I bet if we do a surf for blood, 
to get a uh, make sure the synergy is going. He'll probably he hasn't crit it yet, so maybe it doesn't crit. But he does get the synergy. You can see right here the pet gets the synergy, so he's doing more crit damage. But I don't think that can crit. Uh, yeah, and then a 5% chance to get an Essence Emerald, which I've gotten once. <laughs> but I keep that up at all times, uh, so that's why it's memed. Uh, Frozen Skin is a rune that gives us mana regen. I try to keep that up as much as I can. Uh, mostly so that I get more mana regen. Like, I'm, I'm still undergeared. I'm uh, wearing, uh, Conflagrant, Snowbound, uh, well, Icebound, Snowbound. And I do have the, I do have a, a new earring, uh, the 115 group mission earring, which is, uh, is that 22? So I do have that. That's, which is, is a step over, a step, way step up over the one I had before. Uh, I do have some, I have a lot of gear. <laughs> like, I'm grouping with, uh, 125s pretty much. So, uh, but it is. It is uh, going pretty good for that. Uh, let's see here. Pet attack. My pet attack is assist. Pet attack. Pet swarm cast 10, which is my call a skeleton horde. Uh, skeleton horde is pretty cool. It uh, puts a pet on there. I, uh, it used to be three little skeletons. Now it's one slightly larger skeleton. And this pet here is tanky. Like... I sent it at a 125 mob and it did not die instantly. It actually stayed a while, alive for a little bit. So, um, interesting <laughs> for sure. Uh, and against normal mobs, like it can off tank for the duration of the spell most times. Like, uh, I've, I found it to be a really nice spell. And then I have a uh, pet heal, which I do have to heal my pet. Uh, Something I didn't do a lot of in my Gnome Regard series is I didn't heal the pet ever. And here I have to heal the pet. Uh, quite a bit, actually. So I have Min Companion uh, as the, the first thing. So it, if it's up, it'll, it'll do Min Companion, which is an insta-cast. Uh, let see if I can find it here in the uh, thing here. Uh, Min Companion. Yeah, insta-cast, uh, 100,000 point heal on the pet. And it cures too, it has a chance to cure, but uh, not a big deal, uh, really. Uh, but, so like my, it'll do that, and then I do Companions Aegis, which will uh, lower the damage. So if, you, if you've if ever played like a tank in the game, uh, this is kind of like the thwart, if you will. Uh, that whole line of uh, spells from a Paladin or a uh, Shadow Knight, right? Gives you, you know, absorbs damage up to 12 hits, you know. 36 seconds, so it's a nice little thing to just have on there at all times. Uh, if I'm fighting something a little bit strong, stronger, I will do companion, Companion's Fortification here, uh, which will activate Companion's Fortification, which just uh, increases the massive amount of... Uh, it's almost like a mini defensive for the pet. Uh, and it also gives uh, Companion's Blessing. So if he drops below 40% health, makes him invulnerable. I've had that trigger quite a bit. <laughs> and uh, I, uh, you know, it seems to keep him alive. Um, I'll just, you know, just say it right now. It keeps him alive. Icy Renewal is my cast 11. So this heals for 42,000 and cures, right? So that's why the other, the main companion cure doesn't matter because this one here will cure it. And that means I'll get a clear Restless Ice off him if he gets it um, for the most part. And, uh, but now at 115, so I'm, I am 115 now, and the mercenary does cure now. So she will, uh, cure disease, cure curse. Um, from 111 to 114, she did not cure curse, cure disease, or anything like that. Absolutely worthless. Uh, which was quite a, quite an issue, right? Uh, luckily, necromancers do have, uh, eradicate disease, which is, uh, a level 66 spell but if you can if you can stay alive and usually the mercenary can keep me alive during the, the restless ice right so restless ice has like multiple stages i think first stage is it's a, a 60 timer or 60 counter curse and then once that ticks down you know the 30 seconds or whatever it is 
it will then turn into a disease and uh, eradicate disease will eradicate it so uh, it works really well my embrace the decay which is our purge only does 40 <laughs> and it will not remove uh, it will not remove restless ice so it, it only cures uh, you know the 40 disease and 40 uh, curse right and restless ice starts out as a curse and then it becomes a disease Whereas, you know, like my paladin one shots it with splash. So it's, uh, you know, it's, it's different, right? Like, uh, this isn't going to save your life. And I, for some reason I thought it used to, like when I played no and I was doing this, I could have swore just purging it off, got rid of it. But I think at the time the mercenaries weren't bugged and they actually cast cures during uh 111 to 114. So I don't know a hundred percent on that, but it's it is it's an interesting situation i've run into all right uh let's get this guy stopping uh stop i don't know why she's is she curing me she's like chain healing me for some reason oh i have death bloom on yeah, let's just click that off we're full life uh let's see here yeah and then my debuff is snare which is encroaching shadows it's instant uh just slows them down uh perfect spell and then Scent of Thule is a uh, resist debuff. So if we cast my my numpad three, which is my debuff button, which is these two. So you notice how they both go off, right? I don't need a pause or anything in there. It just, they both work. And that does uh, Tombing Darkness, which is the snare, 65% for two minutes. Uh, then it does Scent of Terrace, which lowers fire, poison, and disease by 36. And then uh, Scent of Mortality, which, I'll see here, lowers their poison by 123, disease by 123, and damage taken from disease spells uh, up to level 118 by 500. So, now there's a little synergy here. <laughs> like, all right, we have... Uh, uh, Damned uh, Grip of Decay is the disease what I'm going with. This is the 115 combination spell. So it'll cast both uh, Damned's Decay and Grip. So when we do our debuff, right, we get extra damage from these spells, right? So we just pop this on there. Notice how it has this first one and then it puts on the other two dots. And then we get the AA uh, Crypt uh, Cascade of Decay Rot, which is another dot that we get for free just for casting a dot. Um, and so you, there's a little bit of synergy right there that gives us our diseases a little bit more damage. You can see here that they are, uh, this one's 6,500 damage, but this is a 111 spell and damage decay is another 111 spell, but it's only 8,100, but they, they last forever, right? So they, you don't have to recast them out very much and they usually last the, the duration of a mob. Sometimes they don't, but just depends on the mob so there's a little bit of synergy there but on top of all that we also get uh death's malaise come on there we go uh which reduces this this attack speed of an uh undead creature only uh his combat dummies are count as either uh reduces the attack speed by 45 lowers dexterity strength agility by 220 Armor class by seven, and the ability to do a wield by fourteen percent. So this lowers an undead's creature's uh, damage output significantly. So it helps our pet uh, tank. And being able to slow live and undead mobs is perfect for a necromancer, right? Uh, but to slow an uh, an a live mob, it takes a little bit more effort on the necromancer's part, right? So uh, char bones here is uh our un our ability <laughs> to slow uh, live mobs right burns the flesh from your target's bones causing 22,000 damage stunning them for one second causing them to become undead for six seconds this target will stun uh stun the creature up to 115. now you're like what i'm like yeah char bones so this debuff right here smoldering bones you have, uh, you know, 13 seconds to get that slow on there. It just works on the tar target dummy because of uh, they count as undead and stuff like that. But you can see there, 
uh, that's how it works on the live mob. That's how I, you know, I just swap in that last one right there. It's a recast time. Typically, it lands the first try. You don't have to worry about it. Um, but get it on there as soon as possible, right? And it just helps the pet, pet tank a little bit more. Uh, because some of these mobs do, do uh, destroy the pet. The pet is not a mage pet. It's not a beast lord pet. It is a, it is a necromancer pet. So it does not tank as well. So that's my that's my experience so far. Uh, if you have the raid earring, which my other necromancer does, uh, it's like literally unkillable. So if you can get the raid earring, the group content becomes trivial for a necromancer. Uh, or I guess the chase earring, uh, depending on what level that's at, right? All right. Uh, let's see here. That is that. And then I have my two... Uh, Fain death spells, uh, the weaker one, death peace, and then the ultimate one here, death's effigy. Uh, they just pretty much uh, let me die <laughs> without dying. Uh, sometimes when I'm pulling, uh, if I, I, I typically pull a snare, because I'm fighting on dead mobs, right? So my snare button here uh, does the 3D buffs, right? Plus uh, slow. So I kind of want that on the mob as I'm bringing it in, you know, try to get that on early. So the mob becomes snared. And it's coming in slow. Uh, so what I'll do is while it's, you know, coming towards me, I'll do, you know, Oblivion. And just kite it backwards, right? As I get to, uh, get to wherever I'm going. I'll just put as many dots on. And then when the mob is in camp, uh, the, the pet sometimes can't taunt it off right away. So, you know, just drop Fane and the mob's off you. <laughs> it's on the pet or the mercenary and then the pet can take it over from there. And then that just gives me a little bit of time to uh, not die. Uh, Whisper Wind. So I use this uh, mostly trying to get around zones because I run so slow. But you can see it just teleports us forward. Uh, I think it's like 300 feet. 315 feet. So it's really good for getting across zones. Uh, I just have it there because I just click it. I don't want it that on, I don't want that on a macro. Uh, just in case I'm trying to do something and accidentally hit it. Uh, let's see here, Thorn Heroes, uh, Origin, Gate, Levant, those are just t transportation things, Lessons of the Devout, that uh, just gives me an experience bonus, Master Group buff, uh, whenever I'm feeling a little froggy and I'm in the, li uh, the, <laughs> the lag pile in Guild Lobby, I'll uh, Master Group buff a Dead Man Floating, uh, I find Levitate annoying, so <laughs> I feel like, you know, other people might find it annoying, but, uh, it is what it is. It's. I think I'm levitating right now. I, I just have it so... I have the... If you go like this, and you face down, and then you zoom out, you will always uh, look down when you, you're levitating, so it keeps you on the ground. See how, like, uh... See how, like, that was. Like, I'm not, I'm not bound by gravity, because I can't jump, so... A little tip there, but it's still... It can be annoying at certain, certain times. Uh, let's see here. So I talked about Death Bloom. This is our mana regen. I kind of cast, I cast it on cooldown for the most part. Uh, but if I'm below 40% and I have blood magic up, I do blood magic and then I do it. Uh, so that I'm regenerating mana at a fast rate while I'm taking it from my life. And typically that gets me back up to like 80 or 90% mana and I'm good to go. Uh... Pestilence, uh, pestilent polar, para, paralysis. Uh, this is probably the bed and, bread and butter of a necromancer soloing. This lets us root rot. Uh, it's a, uh, what, three minute? I think it's three minutes. Yeah, three minute root that only breaks to uh, direct damage. And now that is that means the pet life tap is direct damage. Uh, depending on your weapon, I'm using a... Uh, a mana return weapon right now, but if some of the weapons, uh, I think this one, no, that one's got it too. Uh, I think the Conflagrant Dagger that I had, had a, a poisoned proc on it, right? Now, in a situation where you're not soloing, you're going to want to use a proc weapon, right? Either a two-hander or, uh, you know, the dagger, depending on what you got. And you're going to want that extra damage, but in a soloing situation, you're not going to want to proc because it will break the root and then the mob will come at you. And if you're not using your pet, you know, you might die. 
Uh, let's see here. But this is, you know, bread and butter of how I play. Uh, when I'm not pet tanking. Uh, let's see here. Do -do. Wake of the dead. So if there's any corpses around, so you've killed a bunch of mobs and you didn't loot them for some reason, uh, you can use this to turn them back. It'll bring five, ma five mobs back. Uh, and yeah, they uh, do quite a little bit of damage. Um, but I have auto loot on, so it just, I, they're gone, right? Uh, it's like, I don't know. It's, it's a dumb spell, honestly. This just needs to be, you know, like a counter of your last five kills, you know, and then you can bring it back, right? Instead of having corpses on the ground, have a, have an internal buffer that keeps track of your last five kills and brings those back. You know, I think that would be more, uh, more in line with being useful uh swarm of decay summons a skeleton uh this one is archer yeah so they they, they used to be three archers right and now it says archers <laughs> so they they to remove the amount of pets in the world they they got rid of all the swarm pets extreme highly counts right uh so now it's one but it, it does damage uh dark arrow what does that do 3,000 damage. That seems kind of weak, honestly, but uh, I just proc. I hit him on cooldown almost all the time. Uh, same here with Rise of Bones. Just attacks the target. What is this? 115 skeleton, 80 seconds. Just another. It's just like the, the uh, swarm pet here. Skeleton horde, right? It's just the same thing. <laughs> it's just more damage, more pets. And if you're grouped with a mage, uh, this will increase the spell damage of the uh, of the mini line of spells that a mage has. So a slight synergy there, I mean, you can get with a mage. And a uh, necro mage is a good uh, combination group. Um, necro, mage, druid, shaman, you know, all those like priests and casters, they all kind of work well together. Uh, bard, I think, and uh, maybe the enchanter one too. Uh, let's see here. Uh, embrace, that's the purge. Summon companion, this just summons my pet to me. Uh, I typically keep him on follow. I don't know, he's like, he's like staring there. I think stop makes him do nothing. Yeah, just summons him to me. It's like call hero for the pet. Uh, frenzied, or companion's fury, but it, it comes up as a frenzied dead. <laughs> just makes the pet do more melee damage for uh, a minute. It's pretty nice. It's got a passive ability on it. Uh, that uh, just passively increases the pet uh, attack power and critical chance. So, I mean, the pet is not terrible, but uh, he's not... He's not as good as a mage or a beast or a pet, in my opinion. Uh, Fortify Companion, just kind of the same, but it uh, increases the pet to, where is it down here? Like, passively increases pet health, uh, and avoidance makes it tankier, but active, it increases it even more and gives it a, a damage shield. Uh, absorption damage shield, that is. And then uh, Companion's Aegis, just a... Uh, use it on cooldown kind of thing every 30 seconds give your pet aegis to take less damage especially on content where it's tanking uh torment reduces the cast time of your detrimental spells uh let's see here dead mez i've actually used this a few times to mez stuff uh uh the current rank does 115 but when i was using it it was uh 113 was my highest i could go so it was kind of tricky to use but it is, uh, it is useful. It uh, gives you a one minute AoE mez for all the stuff. So it's kind of nice and, uh, if you think about it. Like uh, being able to do that as a necromancer. Now, as a necromancer, we do have uh, other things, right? Uh, I think it's this one. I've never used it. We, ha we do have a direct, you know, a single target uh, mez for undead. Uh, for 24 seconds, which is kind of nice. Um, and then we get... Uh, Nightmare Shriek, I think. Yeah, this is... Uh, 
This is like the current carry on of the Screaming Terror line of spells. So this is just a live mob. It'll, uh, it will let you as a, uh, a, uh, <laughs> sorry, It'll let you mez a live mob for 18 seconds. So it's pretty nice. All right. So that is, that is the spells and all that. Uh, let's go right here to this, this part of the hot bar, uh, the burns, right? Now, typically when I do a burn, uh, at the moment, I just hit them all because I don't have anything set up yet. I haven't taken the time to do it, but there is some, there is some things you could do to optimize the way I have it. I don't have any of them on hot bar, hot buttons or anything like that because I like to know when they're up because I like to just sometimes twin cast and get a little extra damage on the mob I'm fighting. So, uh, but, uh, I think right here, funeral pyre increases the, uh, see here damage of the uh dots right heretics twin cast twin cast uh 20 spells so you activate that you get a tick timer somewhere over here i believe uh you, 20 spells uh the robe uh i'm using a conflagrant robe so my robe is terrible uh but this will give us a uh uh Next 10 spells to heals you for 40,000. So it's pretty nice. And then Spire, which just increases more damage. Hand, which uh, increases base damage of spells. Uh, Gathering Dusk, which uh, I think this just does a huge damage over time. Uh, but it gives more... Uh, more hatred, I believe. I can't remember. I don't really hit that one as much. So I've been casting lowers our aggro, and then uh, Mur uh, Miracle Torment here reduces the cast time of spells. So you kind of want to do that one before anything else, because that'll let you get more spells out faster. So definitely cool uh, in that regard. Uh, I have a familiar, so I can uh, click that. It'll give me a buff. If we look at key rings, so you're going to want to have a mount, best mount you can get. You're going to want to have an illusion. Uh, the best you can get is the burning lands. I don't have it yet. Uh, you're going to want to get a familiar. I have the, I have the Knight of Shadows one and the uh, Terror of Luckland one. Uh, there is a, a COV one, but I don't have that one yet. Uh, you're going to want the best one you can get. I was able to use these before 115 so if you if you get if you buy a task ad or something like that for the missions you'll be able to get that early but uh definitely it adds more to the stats and region and stuff like that uh aa wise um i'm going to be focusing on enhanced ruin i don't have that one yet destructive cascade and then all the focuses for the the spells in order of how I cast them, right? So I'll go for the Annihilation one here. Uh, then I'll go for Pyre. Yeah, Pyre of jo Jorob. And then Broiling Shadows. And I'll just go down the line, pretty much, getting all the focuses. It's, you know, <laughs> like 20,000 AAs just to get all these. But that's kind of like the way I'm going to be doing it is going to be... Damage, 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 damage. And then uh, at the end of that, I'll come back and I'll pick up anything that increases my hit points. So, uh, but I think that covers just about everything for a 115 uh, Necromancer. If there's any questions or comments or anything I said that was wrong, please let me know in the comments and I will uh, correct that in the 120 video. But uh, thank you very much for watching and please have a fantastic day.